This is the third section of chapter five on probability. And this section is about mutually exclusive and independent events. So let's start with mutually exclusive. So mutually exclusive events cannot happen at the same time. So for example, it might be uh, rolling an odd number in a dice. That might be event A and event B might be rolling an even number on a dice. You can do one or the other, but not both. So because you can't do both at the same time, there is no overlap in these uh, circles in a Venn diagram. Or if they do overlap, then the overlap is going to have a zero in it to represent that they can't happen at the same time. So that means that A intersect B equals zero. And if we want to work out the value of A union B, which is the same as A or B. And remember, A intersect B is a bit like A and B. So you could say A, A and B equals zero. But the union of A and B or A or B, you have to add together the contents of A and the contents of B or the probability of A and the probability of B. And secondly, independent ev events. Well, these can happen at the same time, indicated by this overlap here. but the probability of one event does not affect the other. So when A happens, it doesn't affect the probability of B. Now, if we want to work out the probability of them both happening, A and B, or A intersect B, it's the probability of A times the probability of B. Now, students often get these two confused, so make sure you're clear about both of these definitions and what they mean in terms of the calculations we do, mutually exclusive and independent. Example five, events A and B are mutually exclusive. Okay, and we've got a probability of A is 0 0.2, probability of B is 0 0.4. So before we tackle this question, it will be useful to draw a Venn diagram to represent what's going on. So here's my sample space then I want two non-overlapping circles since these are mutually exclusive. Then the probability of A is 0 0.2, probability of B is 0 0.4. Now in a sample space, the probability needs to add up to one if, uh, if we're given sort of decimals or fractions. 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 is 0 0.6. One minus 0 0.6 is 0 0.4. OK, so we're now ready to answer the question. We want the probability of A or B. Now, this is the same as the probability of A union B. And the way we work this out, it's the probability of A plus the probability of B. So that will be 0.2 plus 0.4. So the answer is 0.6. OK, part B, the probability of A but not B. Now, since these are mutually exclusive, this is just the same as the probability of A. And that is just 0 0.2. Well, you could think of it like, well, we want everything that's in A, but we don't want what's in B to go with it. So it's just a 0 0.2. And then part C, the probability of neither A or B. So this basically means nothing in A or B, just what's left, and that's going to be the 0 0.4. Example six, events A and B are independent. The probability of A is a third, the probability of B is one fifth. Find the probability of A and B. Okay, so the probability of A and B we can write as the probability of A intersect B. Now, since they're independent, if you want to find the probability of A and B, you take the probability of A and you multiply it by the probability of B. The probability of A is a third. Probability of B is a fifth. If we multiply them together, we just get one over 15. So anytime you see this word independent about two events, and you want to find the probability of both of those events, A intersect B or A and B, 
you multiply the probabilities together. And we can use this backwards. In other words, if we notice that uh, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B, then we can deduce that those two events are independent. Example seven, the Venn diagram shows the number of students in a particular class who watch any of three popular TV programs just called A, B and C. Part A, find the probability that a student chosen at random watches B or C or both. So the first thing we need to do is to find the total number of students, total number of students. This is going to be the denominator in our fractions. So um, we just add them together, three plus four plus five, plus 10, plus seven, plus one. And that's a class of 30. So I'm just gonna highlight on the Venn diagram this, B or C or both. So B is this, or C, which is this, they overlap, or both. So I include the overlap. So this question is not saying, right, just work out B, just work out C, but we want both as well. So that includes this part here. So all we're gonna do is add those numbers uh, and put it over 100. So four plus five plus 10 plus seven over 30. That gives 26 over 30, which we could simplify to 13 over 15. So if we're going to write it as a probability, we'll say the probability that they watch B or C or both is that 13 over 15. Now part B, determine whether uh, watching A and watching B are statistically independent. Right, how are we going to do that? Well, if they're independent, if A and B are independent, statistically independent, then this statement should be true. The probability of A and B, A intersect B, should be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So we're going to see if that statement is true. So the probability of A and B, well, that's 4 over 30. So we want to show, is this statement true? Is 4 over 30 equal to um, 7 over 30 times 19 over 30? So we'll just write down here that this is the probability of A intersect B. Probability of A is 3 plus 4 over 30. As we said, 7 over 30. And the probability of B is 4 plus 5 plus 10 over 30, which is 19 over 30. Right, so what's the probability of A times the probability of P? Well, that's 7 over 30 times by 19 over 30. Now that gives 133 over 900, which does not equal 4 over 30. So we'll just say something like since uh, 4 over 30 does not equal uh, 133 over 900, A and B are not independent or we could say something like since the probability of a and b does not equal the probability of a times the probability of b they are not independent but we must show that we've done the working to support that and then finish with some statement that compares the two probabilities So you should now be able to do exercise 5C on pages 77 to 78 of the textbook.